Okay, test, practice test 3A, here's number one. Um, let's see, it says DEF, it's 34 degrees. I'm just gonna write that right in there because it, I, I need to see it. And FEG is 53. So then what's it gonna ask me? DEG, so the whole thing, how do you find DEG? What do you do? Yeah. Okay, so measure of DEG. And it's equals 34 plus 50, which is 87 degrees. Anyway, um, I don't know how much I have to repeat, but make sure you answer both the questions. Do the math, add up the angles to get the total angle, and then tell me whether it's acute or obtuse. So if you end up with more than 90 degrees, I'm, I'm not asking about these angles. I'm asking about the resulting angle, DEG. I want to know if that's acute or obtuse, or right, or whatever. <laughs> Okay, questions on that? You guys good? All right, number two. Don't erase it yet, sorry. I'm not erasing. I'm not one of those guys. Just likes to erase things. Sometimes I like to just mess with people. Determine the values of X and Y in the diagram. Oh boy, look at that. Okay, so we've got a situation here. We've got like a right angle in the middle there. We've got uh, 35 and 25. I'm just gonna rewrite it, because I care. Okay, so, and X is this guy, and Y is this guy, so I need to find those. No problem. All right, now, what do you wanna start with, X or Y? Let's do Y first. Okay, you don't have to. You could start with X, but how do you figure out what Y is, Tristan? I need you to what does your gut on. tell you? What does your gut tell you? How do you find what Y is? Um, well, you can add 25 and 35. And then you're out of numbers and it won't equal 180, right? So. So we may want to do X first, but there is a way to find Y first. Do you know, Tobin? We know that's a right angle. So yeah, so see how that little square thing is a right angle. So what does that have to be? 90. So the whole thing has to be 90. So 30 or 45. So 90 minus 25. So this is parts 25. So the rest of that 90 degree angle, the complementary angle to 25 is what? That's what you're doing. 55. That's what I'm seeing. 55. Oh. No, 65. I thought I was supposed to read your lips and you were going to tell me the answer. But <laughs> I, know, I know the younger question. I'm just going to So 65 degrees. Um, I always say mix up that because it's like 180 minus something or 90 minus something. See, that's so what know. I thought you were doing. And I wasn't stupid because. No, that, I don't think I was you're just stupid. A misunderstanding on my part. And then we can just add 35. Okay, so now you could have done, yeah, so if, now if you add these together, 65 and 35, that's like 100, right? Yeah. So what does X have to be? It's, wait, it's 105, so then X would have 55. to be 75. Oh, oh, yeah, it's 105. So that's 65 plus 25. Yeah. So that's 90 plus 35. So, so 180 55. minus 35 plus 90. 55. So 55? Okay. Yeah. All right. And then just check, make sure everything adds up to 180. I'm sorry. How did you draw your five? How do you draw I, your five? I was no, but like, thinking. Draw your five. Yeah. Draw five. Draw five. Oh, that's how I do it. That's weird. You go from the top. You go I know like, if you go, know. go from the top, I it looks too middle. much like an S. If you go too fast with that top version. Oh, I hate how you draw five. How do you draw five? Well, you'll, get you'll, think, you'll thank me later. It hurts me when I draw five like you do. <laughs> it hurts my it's soul. Like, wait, how? Identify oh, coplanar and non-coplanar lines. Ugh, okay, look at the diagram. What are coplanar lines and what are the non-coplanar lines? What? <laughs> Looks like E and D. Thank you. 
This is line D and line E. Which ones are coplanar and which ones are non coplanar? U and B. Unless I drew a B backwards and not supposed to be D. They both are. <coughs> yeah, so lines D and E are coplanar. Sorry, and there's that looks terrible. Non -coplanar. And there's no yep. non coplanar. There was a problem like that on the last test. No, no. no non coplanar. That's what we like on a road trip. We don't. We English. want non-complainers. That would make English people okay. mad, like double negative. Non, no non, no non-complainers. <sighs> All right, uh, scrolling down, scrolling down, zooming in, zooming in. Okay, four and five, here we go. Find a counterexample to this conjecture. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of congruent sides, it is a parallelogram. Two pairs of congruent sides, it is a parallelogram. What are we finding, counterexample? Yeah. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of congruent sides, it is a parallelogram. Oh, I just drew something. Okay, what'd you draw? Can I? I can't describe it. <laughs> Do you want to draw it? Yeah. And then you can watch this video later. Yeah, I'll like skip to my part only because like that's the only way to draw. Bigger candy. Yeah, I'll be like, should I like have like, oh, I can't wear my glasses, they're like, gross and I hate them. Dying. It's Tori. Oh. Okay. Uh, and you did your hair, Tori. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, <laughs> oh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, I went. No, wait, this isn't right. Oh, yeah, it could have been right. Okay, close, except that's, that's in the Pentagon. No, I didn't do with the, that's super I good. lied, I didn't do those. There you go. <laughs> I forget what I do sometimes. Okay, what does, <laughs> and then I go. It looks like a, a, a what is it, a ray? Like a, it looks like, like a, a, a man array? Stingray. But, stingray. here's here's what probably would have been better I like that. Be the video. So this is actually, there's a nice name for it. It's called a kite. <laughs> Okay, so, so thank you. I, I brought that. Oh my god, I love you. Thank you so much for fixing that. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's all. Okay, so this is actually called a kite. This, this is two pairs of congruent sides. Now, if I would have said, if a quadrilateral has two pairs of opposite congruent sides, opposite from each other, then yes, it is a parallelogram. But this is not a parallelogram, it's called a kite. These are consecutive congruent yeah. sides. I should I should be featured in every flat math video. No, this I agree. I think I should be featured. So you can either draw it or you can uh, describe it. I drew it. I don't know what the actual test, I will look, if there's time, I'll look at the actual test and see if there's any twists, okay? Yes. Does that word say kitty? <laughs> but, but I, I'm actually, I'm actually, That's the word that I said three times for those I was who were listening. To think, so he's like, kite. Kite. You didn't say kitty. It's kite. You said kite. I know, I said kite. But that's kitty up that's there. An e. No, that's, an, that's a lazy, fast E. Can you make the E better that's so it doesn't sure look it like is. kitty? Sure, it is. Oh, I said the E. Mr. Black, you and Mrs. Rembrandt would not get along. They both have bad handwriting. Let's be real. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that? That's so true. Like every teacher, none of them have good handwriting. That is so true. Like, that's right. so okay. rude. Hurtful. <laughs> the base of a triangle measures five inches, and the area is twelve point two square inches. Determine the height of its triangle. So, we're trying to find this guy. But we know the area is 12 point, or 13.2. Did I say 12.2? You did say 12. Oh, embarrassing. How do you find the area of a triangle? Let's write it out. Area is length times width. Half 
base times height. Or right. One yeah. half base times height or base times height Sorry, divided by was, two. Same thing. She was saying, and it messed me up, but I know that one because I have a for it. So whenever you're trying to do like an area backwards, just always write down the formula first, and then we're going to plug in what we know. What do we know about this formula? We know the area. There's three variables, but we know two of them. What are they? Base and area. Area is right there, so that goes there. So 13.2 goes on the left side. One half is a constant. Or it's a, and then do we know the base? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't it say five inches? Yep, five inches. So times five times height. So we're trying to solve for height. Okay, so now what did you do? What do we do to solve this? Solve for plug H. It plug it in, yeah. What's, I mean, you could do and one half like of five. What's one half of five? 2.5. 2.5, so you can get 2.5 H equals 13.2. How do you solve for H? Divide by 2.5. Divide by 2.5. What'd you get? I don't know. Do it on your calculator. Go, go, go. 5.28. Sounds about right. All right, does that feel all right? See what we did? See that? It's a little bit. It looks complicated because it's decimals. Decimals and fractions always complicate things, but it's the, still the same rules. What times 2.5 equals 13.2? Well, that's just a division problem. So divide it. All right. Um, you guys good with five? There'll be a question like that on the real test, and we'll look at that if we have time. Uh, going back to six. Prove that lines A and B are parallel. Uh, so you just have to say can yes. Can I just say alt in Oh, I just want to talk about theorem it was. No, alt exterior angles theorem or whatever. Yep. I so you, you don't have to remember two. the number. Does anyone know the number? 12-2. 12 12-2. Two. 12 two. So that's theorem 12-2. So remember, you can have a list of theorems and their numbers in front of you when you take a test. I do. Okay? Don't worry. So make sure you have all those theorems in front. If you don't, you can just say the theorem, which is alternate or alt ext exterior angles implies parallel lines. So you can just write that shorthand. Alt ext angles implies parallel. Okay, if we were going the opposite, the t real test might say, prove that those angles are equal or congruent. Knowing that those are parallel lines, well, then you can say, well, theorem, whatever. It's probably. 12, 3, or whatever. Parallel lines implies alt x angles, right? Or you could just write the theorem number, right? Yeah, theorem number is great, too. All right, number seven. Use inductive reasoning to determine the next term in the series. 3, 5, 9, 17, 33, 65. What are you doing? What's what's happening? I don't know. Hold on. Oh, it's um. What are they called? No, I lied. Just kidding. Okay. So I'm adding two the first time, four the next time, eight the next time, sixteen the next time. I know what you're doing. Thirty-two. What do you do next? Okay, your time. Okay, so basically, if you're thirty-two plus thirty-two is like sixty-four. Right. So, so you're you're put, putting them together by the number they're together. Like two plus two is four. And four plus four is eight, like you're doing that. Yep. And next, okay. So what is it, 129? Yeah. Yes. Do we have to All explain right. how we Now, here's answer. the deal. Here's what the number seven says. Use inductive reasoning to determine, not to explain. Oh, so we can oh, just write the number. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you tell me why, then I might consider that as extra work. But only a maybe. If, if you do so, extra work so on other parts of the test. if I flip a coin and it lands on heads, you'll no. give me extra credit. Me why they yes, Kate. Oh, oh, um, Maybe. so basically, if you don't know how to word it, because I don't know how to say, do you just, do you say it's plusing by together by... Plusing's like, not a verb. <laughs> or, <laughs> could we just write I've it heard mine, like you minus this, and like, but I haven't so heard I plusing in a while. I, I love it, though. So it's, adding, can we just use plusing as our... <laughs> So you don't have to explain it, but if you want to, then... Will you give me extra credit? 
Possibly. Okay. So do I say it's... How much do you want it? Um, it's like... So show me... And there's other questions to justify, too. You could give me a justification of number one, why you can add those together, too. That's called the angle addition postulate. So you could say that and get a little bit more towards extra credit. Anytime you do that, I might give you a little extra credit. Okay? What about if your problem set? Huh? No, but... All right, are we good with no, one through seven? Yes. I'm right. But I'll be great at it. So it's like more fit. Yeah, why can't? Number eight. We all, people only watch it to hopefully see me as a cameo in the flat Hey, aren't you that girl from the flat Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not to like flex, but like I am. All right, Michael wants to carpet his living room. If the floor is a rectangle and at a 16 by 21 feet, it's just 16 by 21. Determine the area. Oh, how embarrassing. Area equals 16 times 21. What's 16 times 20? What's 16 times 2 would be? So 320 plus one more 16. 336. 336. And it's square feet. You're welcome. That was an easy one. Oh, I forgot. Prove that lines M and N are parallel. Square, so I wrote SF. Okay, so prove that lines M and N are parallel. So you can tell me a couple. You'll have to give me two different things. Okay, you're going to have to give me two justifications here. Well, I don't see any angles that are congruent. Right? So I can't use one of those theorems that says if these angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. But what can I, I can derive that. I know they're parallel because how, I could probably figure out what angle three is. Do you see where angle three is? How do you determine what angle three is? We know it adds up to 180. Yeah, because it's a supplementary angle. So it's a linear pair. So you could say angle three equals 125, right? Because linear pairs Uh, linear pair are supplementary angles, supplementary, okay? They add up to 180, okay? And then now that I know that um, you've got corresponding, see how they're in the same position? See how 125 and, th and angle three are corresponding angles. So you need to be able to recognize the different kinds of angles, alternate exterior, alternate interior, and corresponding angles. Those are the big ones that you need to remember. Okay, so now I can say, yeah, um, they're parallel because alt, or not alt, but corresponding angles, corresponding angles implies parallelity. I think that's a word. Sure. Parallelism. That's what it is. It's not parallelity, it's parallelism. We could just... So you could say the theorem number correspond, or you, you could have gotten it with uh, figuring out what one is. See how, if you get, you could get angle one the same way, linear pair, okay. supplementary angles, and then alternate exterior angles again. One is congruent to, to 125 as well, okay? So number nine is going to be tricky. That's your first proof on a test. So you just need to tell me two things. You need to tell me that, well, I know angle three because I can just subtract it from 180 because they're supplementary angles, okay? And then if I get three, see how three is in the same position, bottom right, bottom right, is that 125? And so we figured out that three was 125 because I subtracted from 180. And then now that these are corresponding angles, I can say that they're parallel lines. So when in doubt, just write it out as much as you can, okay? Tell me as much proof why you think those are, and we'll get into more specific proofs like column proofs later, but do your best on this question. It's gonna be very similar to this. But we'll take a look at it specifically if there's time. Okay, number 10, calculate the distance. 
You can throw this into the distance formula. Do you guys remember the distance formula? Or you can graph it and use the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yep, so you can graph these two, draw the triangle, and then do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Otherwise, it's what, X, X1 plus uh, X2? Or is it or X1 is it X2? minus X2 squared oh. plus Y1 minus Y2 squared. This is basically the Pythagorean theorem. This is everything you would do in the Pythagorean theorem. You would, instead of subtracting the x's, you would count the x's. Okay, so let's plug it in. Um, three minus negative one squared plus uh, negative eight minus negative 11 squared. I'm not good. So that's 16 plus, what is that, nine? So distance equals square root of 25, which is five. The other thing you could do is graph it. Okay, look at, let's graph three, negative eight. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there. And then negative one, negative 11. Negative one, negative 11 is right here. So if I drew a triangle, you could draw it like this, which is up to, no, up three, sorry, that, there was one more hash mark there. So this is the three, because it goes from negative, nine, negative eight down to negative 11, okay? And then over this way, let's see, that goes from negative one over to three, so that's four. So see my triangle, my right triangle? So now I use the Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So nine plus 16 equals 25. So C squared equals 25, so square root it to get five. Remember using the Pythagorean theorem? So there's two ways to do this. You can do it both ways if you want, just to make sure you're doing it right. All right, half done. Yeah, kind of, but it's fun. It's not the first time it's happened. It's the like fun today. type of bullying. It's the fun <laughs> type of bullying. English. I just get bullied by my surroundings. That's okay. I would like you to do your job, PC. I can just pull up on my PC phone and raise crap. that question. I'm on it anyway. Hold up. Give me a second. Sorry about that. One second. All right, determine. That's not the question we're going to. Number 11? Oh, the mouse was on 16, sorry. No. Don't look at the mouse. Determine whether the following conditional statement is true. If Jane lives in U the USA, then Jane lives in Arizona. Is that true? No, but the converse is. False. Now, it says, give a counterexample. Okay. Georgia, Oklahoma. Right. Georgia. Jane lives in Georgia. Or any other of the 49 states in the union. Okay. And then um, in your test to come, it'll say, is the converse true? Yes, it is. If you switch it around, if Jane lives in Arizona, then she lives in the USA. The converse is true but the actual original statement is not. Okay, number 12. Lines A and B are, and C and D are parallel. Find CLM. CLM is, where is it? This degree, I'm gonna show you down here, that bottom left angle. So what is this? We have to figure that out. We can just do the same complementary angle. Uh-huh. Okay. It's just the one that's like A, X, So this is, this, this one's a little involved, but it's okay. It's okay. Isn't it just uh, A, Can't X, we just X, find X, the value for K? Yep, so how do you, that's X. Oh, a, angle K. A, but how do you know what K is? Because we know it's supplementary to 4, 4X. Four okay, what does supplementary mean? It, they will both add up in 180. Okay, so we can set it equal to that, but then we have two variables. We have the measure of angle, yeah, we have but we know that 
See how angle K is the same as 2X plus 25. And 2X plus 25 has to be supplementary to 4X plus 5, right? So what does it mean to be supplementary? The two angles, what does it mean for two angles to be supplementary? They have to add up to 180. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna add those two expressions up to 180. 4X plus 5 plus 2X plus 25. Do you guys see why that has to equal 180? If you look at it, this one's an obtuse. All these angles are either congruent or supplementary. They're either congruent to each other or they're supplementary. Well, you can tell right away if they're congruent because this one is a very obtuse angle and the bottom one is a very acute angle, so they must be supplementary. So they have to add up to 180. So see how I just added the two things to equal 180? So you have to build an equation and solve it. Well, you know how to solve an equation. First step is to simplify both sides. So let's combine the x's. What's 4x and 2x? 6x. Get 6x. So there's 6x and then 5 and 25 is 30. Take away 30, okay. you get the 150, you divide by Right, so six, now if you are rusty five. on your solving equation skills, you can follow these steps. There's no variables on both sides, so now we're just getting rid of the constant on the variable side. What happened to the green marker? I gave it back. You did, but I don't remember what I did with it. There it is. Okay, minus 30. Minus 30, whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Three, yeah, six x equals 150. How do you find x now? Okay, is that your answer? No. I mean, no. No. This is why it's involved. It's involved. Okay, so now you just know what x is. So you're asked to find this angle here, but X, that's not 25, that's what X is. So how do you figure out what this angle is? Don't you, you have to find out what that X angle is, right? You have to feed an X, what this is, X yeah, plus Put an X in there, what's two times 25? 50 plus 25 is 75. So if this is 75, the vertical angle is also 75. There's a lot of steps to that problem. Do what, Tori? Never mind. I can't read the well, screen while we're I'm glad to get extra credit when you say, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong postulate, whatever. That's how I got it, but I just put it in our Okay, guys, so this, this is going to take a little bit of um, detail. So you have to know, I mean, you kind of go with your gut too, right? You know that all those angles are either congruent or they add up to 180, okay? If you can remember that, then you can figure out the rest of the details. Just make sure you're answering the right question. This does not say solve for X. It says find that angle, girls. You can talk about whatever later. I don't know what you're talking about. We were talking about the math. Yeah, we were actually talking about degrees. Good. Okay. But we were talking in British accent, so that's why we were talking. Oh, and we yeah. sometimes like, it's easier to talk in a British I know. accent. That's, I sometimes know. Like, you'll be like, going for like a mental breakdown, and you'll just talk in a like, British accent, do like that, do you just happens. <laughs> <laughs> and you accept it. I can it. see that. All right, oh so make sure you finish this problem. Complete it, because there's lots of details in it. Okay, determine the midpoint. You could this is the formula. You could graph it and figure out which point's in the middle. Use your gut. If you don't use real graph paper though, and try to use like that very bad drawing that I did, then it's gonna be di more difficult. Use real graph paper. If you're gonna graph it, then use your gut to see where the midpoint is. But there's a nice little theorem, midpoint formula. You, it's basically the average of the X's and the average of the Y's. How do you find the average of two numbers? You add them together and then divide. Well, if it's two numbers, then you divide by two, but you divide by the amount of numbers. Yep. So you can write this down if you want. This is the midpoint. Y1 plus Y2 divided by two. That's the average of the Y's, average of the X's, or basically halfway between the X's and halfway between the Y's. 
So I'm going to plug that in. Um, negative 2 and negative 8. And then 3 and 4. Fraction. Oh, fraction. So that's negative 5, comma, 3.5. Or 3 and a half. If you were to graph it, it would be, the Y would be in between the three and the four on the graph, okay? And usually a midpoint is going to be right on the line or halfway between. Always the midpoint. Well, even with threes, it would be halfway between. I mean, no, because then it could be like a third. No, you're not finding the midpoint between three different points. You're just finding the midpoint oh. between two points. Okay, number 14, a rectangular computer screen measured by the length of the month. What is the size of a computer screen? That is 12 by 9. So do you guys know like a 42-inch TV? Do you know how they measure that? It's not like 42 long and whatever. It's the diagonal. Okay, so if this is the... Uh, this is what the screen looks like. What number is this? 14. So this is the screen. It's a 12 by 9. Oh, this is just brackets in here. So how do you figure out that diagonal? It's a triangle. Right? Yeah, it's a right triangle. So Pythagorean theorem, right? Yeah. So did you get an answer? I did. 15 inches. All right. It equals exactly 15. When you plug it in, you get... A squared 144 plus 81 is 225. And then the square root of 225 is 15, okay? So uh, I'll just write it out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 12 squared plus nine squared equals C squared. 225 equals C squared. C equals the square root of 225, which comes out to a nice 15. Oh, it's also a cube. I don't know if we had to do that, but I wrote it down. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't ask for that, but thanks for doing that. All right, classify this. Oh, oh, that's number 15, Tori. So we do need to measure it. Oh, shoot. I'm coming in, Joe. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. It's done. That one is also 15. Okay, okay. Just spoiler alert. Jeez. So the question will literally just define the angle. So uh, use a protractor to find this measure and then classify it. What does it mean to classify it? To put it under one of the three of the Q sub, not sub one, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Halfway between 10 and 20. So it's 15 degrees, which is what kind of angle? Not acute. Acute. So 15, make sure you measure it. It's 15 degrees, uh, right? 15 is yeah. 15. And it's acute. Don't forget to classify it. Acute, obtuse, right, straight. Okay. All right, number 16. We're gonna do it. We're gonna find. We're gonna finish reviewing this test, so you guys are well prepared. Sure we go. Okay. okay. So this is just the same question, right? Is yeah. number fourteen or thirteen or whatever that was thirteen? So just find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. Just because they're decimals doesn't mean you don't follow the same rules. Okay, so let's find the midpoint. Equals negative three plus 4.6 divided by two is the X coordinate. And then 5.2 plus negative 2.2 divided by two is the Y coordinate. You guys do that math? What'd you get, Tori? Point eight, 
Because that's like 1.6 divided by 2, yeah. which is 0. 0.8. And, and then, then what's the this, other, 2? Other ones are simple because it takes away the... the yeah, so you just goes decimal. goes down to 3, or goes down to 2. It goes down to 3, so that would be 1.5. Do you get 1.5 for the y coordinate? Oh, that, that's right. None of you did the practice test, yes. Except Maddie. Is that what you got, Maddie? What? Oh, 1.5 for the y coordinate? Because you end up with 3 divided by 2. Okay, good. Next. Determine whether polygon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's a pentagon. We have to do it's convex or concave. Explain why. It's, it's concave. It's concave, concave. because we, can know, we know we can draw an angle on the outside or whatever. Whatever yep. that so, zero was. Because it looked like someone punched it. Yeah, so it's concave. There's half of your points. Yeah. Now you have to say why. Because if you can draw a diagonal that goes outside of the shape, on the exterior of the shape, then it's then it's um, concave. So here's what I can say. You can draw a line. I can say here. diagonal LN is, is outside of the shape on the exterior. So I can say LN diagonal LN, line segment symbol, is exterior. That's all you have to say, or on the outside. Because of that theorem, you can quote the theorem if you want, and not have to even do any of that. But if you want to just explain in your own words, that's what the theorem is. Um, you, I will not accept, it looks like it got punched in the face, even though that's a good way to know if it's concave, but it's not a good way to prove that it's concave. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that's just... Or extra credit, if you wanted to say that. All right, determine the perimeter and area of ABC. Okay, so this is where, so you need all three sides to figure out the perimeter of something, right? But you're only given two. But we can find the area pretty easily. How do you find the area of this triangle? It's just times everything divided by two. Whatever. No. Times is not oh, a verb. Sorry. <laughs> but you don't. It's you, height times width or whatever. Yep. Yeah, so base times height, half, one half base times height, right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, we know what the base is. Like if you look at it upside down, you could say the base is 16 and the height is 8. So equals one half 16 times 8. So that's just 64 square centimeters. That was the easy one. How do you find the perimeter of this triangle? Well, you need that third side, don't you? How do you find that third side? Yeah, but... What's the problem with using the Pythagorean? Oh, wait, no, it gives us that third side. That's it? Yeah. Silly. 11.2 centimeters. See the little arrow? Oh. <laughs> I thought that was an angle at first. <laughs> okay, so perimeter is just adding them all up. 16 plus 21 plus 11.2. So what is that? 37, 48.2 centimeters and not square centimeters just centimeters okay is that problem okay yeah good two more state the hypotheses and the conclusion of this conjecture just put your finger over if and say <laughs> the product of two integers is divisible by six so this is the height the product of blah 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 two integers is divisible by six okay and then the conclusion or conk 
is then, cover up the word then, and just state one of these numbers is divisible by three. Okay, so that was the easy part. You just cover up the words if and then and write it out. And now it says, is the conjecture true? Explain how you know. The product of two integers is divisible by six. Um, if that's the case, then one of those numbers is divisible by three. So if the product of um, two integers is divisible by six, so like any multiple of six, basically, then one of these numbers is divisible by three. You just have four and two, that is not correct, because neither of them are divisible by three, right? If the product of two integers is divisible by six, what about... So just four and two, right? Oh, integers. So it's got to be integers. So uh, four and two does not equal a product okay. of six. It's not divisible by six. It's true. Eighteen. But explain why. Eighteen. No, eighteen. Three goes into eighteen, and so does two. So it's got to be divisible. Yes, eighteen is divisible by six. Three. Um, because of those two integers is divisible by six. So one of those integers has to be. Divisible by three. Or divisible by, oh, and the other divisible by two. Okay, so that's different. Twelve? Twelve. So think about all the different um, integers of, tw of factors of twelve. Four and three, two and six. Those are all true. Can you explain why? <coughs> It says explain how you know. Because it's probably like what two evens will bounce to another even, whatever. Here's, here's what you could say. You could say three goes into everything six goes into, right? Well, all the multiples of six. If three goes into six, three goes into all the multiples of six, like six, 12, 18, 24, right? Two goes into all the multiples of six. Everything six goes into. All the multiples of six are even numbers. So I okay. can just say six is divisible by three and two, and this is how it goes. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to explain it. Okay? Do your best on this. Go with your gut. I'm not going to be too harsh on this, so... Find a counterexample to this conjecture. The sum of any two integers that are greater than one is less than their product. Oh. Can we just like write down like mapping for it? What? Never mind. Okay, the sum of any two integers that are greater than one is less than their product. Wow. Well, okay, well, yeah, two and two is a good example. Because two and two, two plus two is four, two times two is four, four is not less than four. Okay, what about another one? Greater than one, any two integers, is there anything greater, anything, other example? Because two plus three is five, which is less than two times three, which is six. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Black math, give me some math and I'll give